Hey everyone, it's Jeannie here, and today I am joined by New York Times bestselling author and the patriarch of the famous Duck Dynasty clan, Phil Robertson. I admire the stance that you take for Jesus, and I'm just so happy to be talking to you about your new book, Jesus Politics. Yeah. Phil, welcome. Hey, good to be here, Jeannie. I am just, um, you know, before we, we officially started this, you were talking about how people drive to where you are and you baptize them right in the river and you sit down and you eat with them. And I was thinking, man, that's good old fashioned Christianity. That is the way I see in the book of Acts, the way they did it. You are on track. <laughs> you gotta remember when, when, when Jesus got here, for roughly, by my count, 5,300 years. The prediction was made way back in Genesis. Someone from a woman, born of a woman, mm -hmm. would crush the evil one. So everyone waited, and the Old Testament genie is from Genesis all the way through Malachi up to Matthew. Jesus is coming, Jesus is coming, Jesus is coming. All the prophecies, hundreds, we've got Jesus coming. This is where he'll be born. This is where he'll, they'll call him. He's going to do this. All these prophecies, well, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Jesus is here. And John the Baptist was hollering, repent. Mm -hmm. For the kingdom of God is near. And then Jesus went out and he preached, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is near. He sent out the disciples and they all said, repent, for the kingdom of God is near. Mm -hmm. Well, it came in Acts chapter 2. And he gave the, these apostles the ability to speak in any language worldwide. He sent them out and it reached worldwide. And now there's about 3 billion of us. Amazing. What we're trying to do through this book is just to get the human race to put their faith in Jesus. He'll remove their sin. Mm -hmm. And he'll guarantee them they can be raised from the dead for crying out loud. Yeah. And all they have to do is love him and love each other. Jeannie, I just don't see the downside, kid. Yeah, I was going to say the same thing. That sounds like a pretty good deal to me. <laughs> it's the best deal we're ever going to get. Someone says, well, I think I'll take my chances without Jesus. I'm mm -hmm. like, and what chance is that? Because physical death, as we all know, it's all around us. Yeah. It's coming at some point. You're like, at least with this story, I've never heard a story that said every wrong thing you ever did won't be counted against you. Nothing in the future will be counted against you. He'll be interceding for you back in heaven. And on top of that, don't fear death. If you believe in me, Jesus said, even if you die, yet shall you live. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Yeah. Your body goes into the cemetery. You, your soul, your spirit goes to be with God. And when Jesus returns, he's going to raise your dead, cold body, and it'll be an immortal body and live forever. I'm like, this is about the best rescue I've ever heard of. Yes. So that's the message we're getting out through this book. Trying I love to, get it. to just love God and love, love their neighbor. I mean, you know, I'm not asking for the moon here. Yeah. You think there's a lot of people who come down here all the time. So we are making an impact. Oh, absolutely. Your family. So we can't stop because God has appointed us to do whatever we do in the kingdom. So I happen to be a proclaimer. I love it. You're, yeah, you're out there. You're like John the Baptist. <laughs> you're a voice crying out in the wilderness. You and know, the book of 
Peter the apostle, he's the one that ran out on Jesus at one time. I wrote it down here. Listen to this. Uh, let's see. You are a chosen people, a royal priesthood. So think about it, Jimmy. When I'm walking down the road and somebody drives by and looks at me, he may say something like, you know, I wonder where that homeless guy is going. <laughs> or they look a little scruffy. He would never think I was a member of a royal priesthood mm. and I'm actually a priest in the kingdom of God. Yes. He would say, what? We are a chosen people, a holy nation of people belonging to God. Here's my point. We're a kingdom, a spiritual kingdom, with Jesus being the king. We bow to him. He's a good king because he's our brother, our friend, our savior. He's a great king. He's never going to desert us. He'll always be there. He's removed our sin. He's going to raise us from the dead. So we go forth and share that with others because Jeannie, I don't think it's a political fix. It's, yeah. uh, I call it Jesus politics because I wanted them to see it's a spiritual war we're in. Yeah, you know, Not it's so much a political fix, it's a spiritual fix. Yeah. So we need to get back to God. You know, they ran him out of our schools and out of Hollywood and out of the news media and out of the education. They never, I have two degrees. I know I don't look like I do, but I actually mm -hmm. do. I have two degrees. Not one of my college professors, Jeannie, ever said the word Jesus or God or the Holy Spirit. Not one word in any history class. Nothing. Well, if you come out of a college, I was just out there, you know, getting high, getting drunk, running and ripping. I thought yeah, it was the 60s. So you like, until I was 28, someone sat, I sat down with him and I thought, he, what? God became flesh. Mm. We're counting time by it. This calendar says July 2020. Last year was 2019, 2018. We'll walk it back. You're going to get to year one. Well, that just so happens that's when Jesus showed up. Yeah. Well, I would at least investigate him. <laughs> yeah, right. Everybody's documented that. <laughs> you know, um, Jesus politics exposes the destructive nature of American politics, right? Yep. What inspired the book? Were you, were you in prayer about this? You know, I, I can tell by, by hearing you the burden that you have for humanity to come to the, to the knowledge yep. of salvation in Christ Jesus. Was this some kind of a divine deposit? It wasn't like I heard an audible voice that said, Phil, write a book. No. I just am watching what Lot observed way back in Sodom and Gomorrah. And the Bible says he was tormented in his righteous soul. Uh, uh, watch. If God did not spare the angels when they sinned, but sent them to hell, putting them into gloomy dungeons to be held for judgment, if he did not spare the ancient world when he brought the flood on its ungodly people, there was a period in history before now, way back in the days of Noah, and you say, what was the problem? God said, their, their every thought was evil, mm. except for eight. Noah and his family, eight, Jenny, you're like, whoa. Yeah. Well, he drowned them all. But he protected Noah, a preacher of righteousness, a preacher of righteousness, and others. Yeah. There was eight in all. If he condemned the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah, they were wicked. 
kind of like we are. For burning them to ashes, and he made them an example of what's going to happen to the ungodly. If he rescued Lot, a righteous man who was distressed by the filthy lives of lawless men, for that righteous man being among them day after day was tormented in his righteous soul by the lawless deeds he saw and heard. If this is so, then the Lord knows how to rescue godly men from trials and to hold the unrighteous for the day of judgment for continuing their punishment. I only bring that up to let you know, you say, that's what motivated you to say, please read this. Please think about what you're doing. I mean, look, Jimmy, the fruit of the spirit. We're trying to get America to understand because if I, I look at them in the streets of New York where you are now, and I'm thinking, wait a minute, spray, spray cans, the F word follows them everywhere they go. They're grown, they're adults. They have a spray can of paint and just on the statues, on the storefronts, on the, the monuments, the their spray can, all these these filthy words, and they on churches, it. on churches as well. They're full of hate, and I'm thinking, the fruit of the spirit: love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. You're like, I'm, I, I'm like, what, what about this? You could live like this. It, it's, a, it's a spiritual war. That's why I told you, I don't think it's a political fix. Jimmy. I think it's a spiritual fix from, from bottom yeah. to top. You know, I've been seeing even Christians, you know, which it's, it's been very concerning and hurting, you know, it's hurtful. Um, you know, I see a lot of Christians and you talk about this in the book that, you know, they're confusing their spiritual identity with their political ideologies. That can, is you correct. Talk, can you talk about that and why as Christians, we have to be careful not to do that? The source of love is God the God of heaven. God, the Apostle John said, is love. Listen to this. Uh, if I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains, this answers your question, but have not love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor, and surrender my body to the flames, but have not love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. So when even Christians get tangled up in these local events and these uh, evil things that they see, love is patient. Think about a person being patient. The people in your streets in New York and all across the country, they are on the other side of patience. Mm -hmm. Love is kind. It does not envy. You've got it and I need it and it's not fair because you've mistreated my ancestors. They're envious. You're white privilege. Uh, love does not boast. Love is not proud. It's not rude. How about that for the streets of America? Love is not rude. Mm -hmm. It is not self-seeking. They form these groups under the banner and you have, it's not easily angered. Oh, you say, it seems we may have a love problem in the country. Love keeps no record of wrongs. Not a, we're not somebody's answer. We weren't even here. I, I didn't do it. I wasn't there. 
That's you're going back 100, 200 years. Love does not delight in evil. Love rejoices with the truth. Let, check this one, Jeannie. Love always protects, always protects, shields, defends. Love always trusts, always hopes, always persevere, and watch, love never fails. Do you realize, girl, how difficult it is to get human beings to do that? So, to everyone I see that drive down here, fly down here, and I take them to the river, and they start over again, they give their life to Jesus. They're members of the kingdom of God. You're like, they are guaranteed they'd be raised from the dead. For everyone that says, Lord, you had to love me a lot to come down and pay that awful a price to get me off the earth. For everyone that does it, I'm like, it's worth it. Even yeah. if just one turns, it would be worth it. Absolutely. So how would Jesus politics um, deal with the the racism issue or the social injustice or all of that? You know what the saddest thing in the world is? To see people not realizing the Apostle Paul was speaking to the Areopagus. That's the smartest individuals that the Greek, the Greek Empire had. Check this out. Uh, the God who made the world and everything in it is the Lord of heaven and earth and does not live in temples built by hands. He's not served by human hands as if he needed anything. Because he himself gives all men life and breath and everything else. Now watch. From one man, he made every nation of men. From one man. You say, we all came from Adam. You say, well, how come that one is a different color than I am? God did it. God made them that way. Look, he determined the time set for him. He determined the time. He himself gives all men life, everything else. Uh, he determined the time set for him, the exact places where they should live. God did this so men would seek him and perhaps reach out for him and find him. So he's not far from each one of us. That text says whether you're my college professor said there's the mongoloid, the negroid, and the Caucasian. That's what I had to put back on the test. That's what he said. There were three races, and those are the three he mentioned. Now they've gone nuts for that. But the bottom line is, God said, just one race on the planet Earth. It's called the human race. We all came from the same two, Adam and Eve. They've traced that DNA all the way back to mitochondrial Eve. You said they've traced it all the way back. And then it just stops. Therefore, if we all come from one man and there's just one race on planet Earth, the human race, where we meet up there, it's a pretty rough part of town, as they would say. But Miss Kay and I, we go up on Sunday mornings, and there's a anywhere now since the pandemic, there's about 100. But before that, it was a couple of hundred. Some of them are afraid. But about 60% of them are African American, and 40% of them are white. And I told them one day, I said, this is pretty cool. There's no black churches with us, no white churches. It's just the kingdom of God. Yeah. worldwide and this is the way it ought to be we have a meal some of the homeless come in they've been sleeping under a bridge we help them out try to get them out from under the bridge if they want to but the homeless are there we're all eating a meal together we stop and we remember the blood that was shed for us the lord's supper mm -hmm. and the bread the body that was was nailed to a cross 
we just stop in the middle of the meal. I said, let's remember Jesus here with the Lord's Supper. You know, and when when I go down there and I'm baptizing these some of these dudes that live on the street and they haven't had a bath probably in some of them six months, wow. but Jenny, I don't care. I love them. They're my brother and they're in the audience. So it is a pretty cool thing to be a part of. That's wonderful. Blacks, whites, all together, brothers, sisters in the Lord. Yeah. So that's what we're trying to show America. We're reaching a lot of them, but you say we could always reach more. So maybe if I write a book. Yeah. I love the subtitle of the book, um, How to Win Back the Soul of America. Would you say that America's sold, sold its soul? Uh, you say, you say, Phil, I noticed something about you. You said, when I, when I, when I ask you a question, you reach over to your Bible every time. You reach over to a Bible every time. Here's the Apostle Paul. He's talking to the, a young evangelist named Timothy. Check this out. The Lord's servant must not quarrel. Instead, because you ask, who, who, who's stolen their soul? The evil one. The Lord's servant must not quarrel. That's me. Instead, he must be kind to everyone. I'm the Lord's servant. I don't bad now the people who are tearing up and shooting up the streets and the spray can. You say, you don't hate them. Not at all. I would love to sit down with them and have a little Bible study. The Lord's servant must be able to teach, not resentful. Those who oppose him, I have plenty. He must gently instruct in the hope that God will grant them repentance and leading them to a knowledge of the truth. The truth in the Bible, uh, Jeannie, is Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. Hoping they'll come to a knowledge of the truth, that they'll come to their senses and escape from the trap of the devil mm -hmm. who has taken them captive to do his will. So every question you ask, you, you can say, if anybody asks you, say, every time I ask him a question, he read me a Bible verse. Mm -hmm. He read me a Bible verse to let me know he didn't write this. He just read it to me. That's why when you become a faithful soldier for God, and you realize that Satan had, you'll know the truth. You've heard this, and the truth will set you free. You've heard that? Yeah. Set you free from what? Set you free from Satan. He's taken them captive to do his will. Set free from sin. Take your sins away. Set free from guilt. Oh, uh, my life's in shambles. I'm on drugs. Sets you free from law having to be perfect. He, he allows, he'll remove your mistakes. He'll intercede for you, not counting your future sins against you. And also the final thing he sets you free from is the grave. Now, Jenny, that's what I call game, set, match. <laughs> you know? Yes. Set free from Satan, sin, guilt, law and the grave i'm like yes I, count me in right count me in <laughs> well i thank you so much for sharing this book with the world i mean we definitely need to really think more than ever strategies and things that we need to do to advance the kingdom of heaven on earth in these times in these crazy times and and you know i know in the book you give a manifesto that shows us how to do right by King Jesus, you know, and not, you know, what we, our political vote beliefs. For who, vote for people who are godly and, you know, love them all, forgive them, be quick to forgive, but then say, come on, just think about this. 
So hoping God will grant them. It's God who granted us repentance, you and me. He granted yeah. us repentance. I, so I never dreamed I'd be following Jesus, but I am. And now that I am, I'm like, what was I thinking? Yeah. Well, I'm grateful. I'm grateful that you are, you know, because you can you can share the what God is really speaking to the people today. You're a good uh, sister. I, You're a good sister. Oh, Amen. Why well, I, I agree. I, I'm I, your I, brother, kid. I'm your brother. You're my sister. Amen. Yes, we are, and I'm so grateful for that. 